Tonight, what we wanted to do is look at the Enoch calendar. And we're going to go back and do some calendar studies. I found some new information. We've been talking about it over the last month or so off and on. I was able to create some graphics that I think help explain their way of doing things a lot better. So we have the Enoch calendar, which is the oldest version of the calendar, according to the scrolls. And then there was the Zadok calendar, which added a lot of other things to it. The Enoch calendar is actually just a prophecy, but you get to see the way everything develops in the timeline. But here is the study pages, and right now the only one that's linked live is the Enoch calendar. We're going to come back next week and start studying all of these, and I think they'll be really good. So if we go here, here's an example of the Enoch calendar. All of the Dead Sea Scroll calendars are done in a series of circles, as opposed to ours, which, like you saw, was 12 squares for 12 months, and in each square is basically 30 days or 30 subsquares. In this case, what we're doing is, um, and we'll explain this as we go, but this is the circle of uh, the inner circles, and it's the uh, weeks, centuries, and jubilees. So here, if we just go through and look at this, we'll come back to this top one, but here are the weeks of centuries. So as you can see, what, he, what he's doing is we're looking at human time, and according to prophecies, there was a time when the world was created, and Adam was created on the sixth day, so that's the week of creation. From that time going forward, exactly 7,000 years will be a recreation or a new heavens and a new earth. So in that 7,000 year time period, we have 6,000 years of human history, we have a millennial reign, etc. Well, according to the book of Enoch and the other scrolls, Enoch's version of this is that he takes the 7,000 years divides it into weeks. Now, a week is seven days. So that's what we're doing. So if there's 7,000 years divided by 10 weeks, that's seven centuries or 700 years apiece. So as you can see what we're doing here, we're getting up to week 10, kind of starting over week one. So this is one through 10. And whatever is highlighted is actually the week. So this is week seven, week eight, week nine, and then finally week 10. So it always starts at the top. So these are the weeks of centuries. So the, the century counts, or the week rather counts. So, and then here down at the bottom, we have a, a list of the timelines. So the first 700 years is 3925 BC to 3226. And we get all the way up to the year 7000, which is 3075. So that's the way he groups these things. Going on down further, just to make sure we understand it well, here are the week count and the century counts. So again, a week is seven days. So in week nine, for instance, you've got century one to seven, and then we have week 10, century one to seven, and that would end the time. Starting at creation, we have first 700 years or the first seven centuries, and so you can see how it works seven centuries in each week. And then if we come down here, just to kind of show you everything again, here is the Jubilee count. So there are, a Jubilee is 50 years, so two Jubilees is a century, seven centuries is a week of centuries, the 10 weeks is all of time. So that's basically how his wheel works. So I thought these animated pings and graphics would help to explain how everything works. Now, when we go back, we'll just be looking at this today, but as we go back next week and start looking at all the different Zadok calendar pieces, it'll be really interesting. It'll be slightly different. So he's breaking this up simply to tell us certain prophecies will happen in certain centuries. And so that brings us back to the top here. And basically, again, that's just the count. But we have weeks we can study. So the intro is this page. Uh, which explains that this prophecy is found in chapters 91 and 93 of the book of Enoch. And a little bit of explanation. So if you click on any one of these buttons, you'll be able to study that particular week. So week number one, again, the week is the first week. It's the first 700 years. So it's Jubilees 1 to 14. Remember, those are 50-year periods. So 
14 50-year periods is 700 years or seven centuries. So in each one of these cases, we're going to show week one, the Jubilee count, which is in this case 1 to 14. AM years, of course, is Anno Monday. It's from the year of creation. So it's the first 700 years, so the year 1 to the year 700. And in BC time, that would be 3925 to 3226. So this is the week we're talking about, and he's going to give you a prophecy that happens at the last day of that week. So what we've done is we've had a quote from the book of Enoch and then an explanation. So in Enoch 93.3, it says, I was born on the seventh day of the first week while justice and righteousness still endured. So if we go and look this up, if you go to Genesis 5, for instance, to double check this stuff, you'll see that he was born in the year 622 AM. So 622 years after creation. All you have to do is add these up. Adam was created. Adam was 130 when Seth was born. Seth was so many years old when Enos was born. And you just keep going, and you see that he was in 622. Well, the first, so 622 was in that first 700-year period. So it is week one. It's in the seventh day of that week, which was 600 to 699. And he's actually in the first jubilee of that period. Now, he doesn't mention anything about jubilees, but I've added the jubilee count just so we can see how it relates to the Zadok calendar as we go on to explain it. So like I say, this is the earliest form, just looking at uh, weeks and the centuries, and then they turn it around later. So that's the explanation here. Now, if we go to week two, for instance, again, we'll see week two, that's Jubilees 15 to 28, which is the year 701 to 1400 AM, or from creation. And that's 3225 BC to 2526 BC. And so we're talking about the evil that happened in that second week. So between 700 and 1400, some evil happened punishment of which it would be the flood and other things, and that happens in the third week. So we have it marked on their calendar. So here's what it says. Uh, Enoch 93.4. After me there will arise in the second week great wickedness. So we know about the fall of the angels and all the other things that happen. Eventually we'll do a study on the first age and pull in all the extra biblical documents and paint a really good picture. Deceit will spring up in that time period. Afterwards, there will be an end to that time period. Not that week, but there will be an end. And the first end is a flood. According to Josephus, in the Testament of Adam, he mentioned that he knew that there would be an end by a flood of water and an end by a fire. Wasn't sure which one would come first. And then Canaan, of course, prophesied that it would be the other. But anyway, so this is what happens. There's an end that comes. Mankind will be saved, and of course they were through Noah, and will revive even though he will make a law for sinners. So you would think after seeing the destruction of everything, creating specific laws, that would be enough. But no, evil comes back. And so this is an explanation here, and you can read it. So these, these are good study pages for us to do. So Enoch's birth and then the angels fell, of course. The flood occurred, according to Genesis again, in 1656. So 1,656 years after creation. So right here. So this was during the second jubilee of the third century of the third week of centuries. So we can go back and look this up. It was in the second jubilee of the third century of the third week of centuries. So you're getting an idea of how this calendar system works. And it's really neat because when we get to the Zadok calendar, you'll be able to look at the wheels and see all of time in one glance. You'll be able to see all the festivals, the Passovers for whatever year and the centuries and the, all that kind of stuff. So that's what's happened here. So we go to week three, and we have week three is Jubilees 29 to 42 which is 1401 to 2100 a.m. from creation, which is 2525 to 1826 B.C. So the flood has occurred. 
So the flood, again, would be right back here. But something else happens a few hundred years later, which is what this next prophecy is about. So in Enoch 93.5, it says, after that, during the third week, a man, and we understand it later to be Abraham, will be elected as a plant of righteous judgment, and his posterity will become the plant of righteousness forevermore. Now, in the scrolls, it talks about the plant of righteousness, and it explains it. The idea that plants or trees are nations, Gentile nations, but somewhere along the line, there will be this special plant of righteousness, and that's the Jewish nation. From that nation, the Messiah comes. Now, after Messiah comes, a lot of times the Messiah is referred to as that plan of righteousness. But it kind of all comes together, as we can see. So during this third week, this is what happens. And so we learn, again, if you just stick with Genesis, Abraham was born in 1948 a.m., 1,948 years after creation. Now, you, for Genesis, you'd have to look at chapter 5 and get all the way up through Noah, Chapter 8 says it was in Noah's 800th year the flood came. And then if you go to Genesis chapter 11, it picks up with Shem and Shem's firstborn son being born two years after the flood. And then you can just continue on until you get down to Abraham's birth. Abraham was born 1,948 years after creation, which is 292 years after the flood. He was Shem's 10th generation descendant. And so God gave that covenant. So again, this was the first jubilee of the sixth century of the third week. So if we go back and look this up, this, the uh, first jubilee of the sixth century of that third week. And that's why it makes it confusing. It's because in for the AM count, we just simply say it was 1948, which is nice and easy. Instead of saying the first year of the first Shemitah, of the first Jubilee, of the first Ona, of the first age. You know, that kind of a thing. It's complicated, but it would be the same way if you wrote everything out in on paper. Instead of saying 2021 AD, if you would actually write out in the year of our Lord, 2000, two, you know, and on like that. So that's what this one is. Now, if we go to week four, we have... Jubilee count 43 to 56. So again, those 14 jubilees in those seven centuries, Jubilee 43 through Jubilee 56, that's in the AM count 2101 to 2800 AM, which is 1825 to 1126 BC. So as you can guess, in this time period, we're going to have Moses, not quite to David, but the setup of the kingdom, the judges period, that kind of stuff. So again, that's this time period here. The prophecy that he gives for this week of years is right here. And so what we're going to do is go down here. Enoch 93.6 says, After that, during the fourth week, visions of the holy and righteous, to be God at Mount Sinai, will be seen, and a law for all generations, and an enclosure will be made for them. So a tabernacle, a mosaic law, the focal point of history, actually, other than Messiah, will happen. And this explains the plan of righteousness and how all this takes place. So again, if we look through the scrolls, uh, they all tend to agree that it was 2448 a.m. that the Exodus occurred, which would be 1478 B.C., according to their chronology, which is the first jubilee of the fourth century of the fourth week. Now this may seem kind of complicated, but it just, once you get to understand it, it's pretty easy. I don't want you to focus on this a whole lot because I want you to focus on the Zadok calendar we'll be releasing next week. But it's the same kind of circular calendar, which is odd to the way that we think, that the 12 boxes with 30 sub boxes in them for days and months. But it's actually a pretty neat system, and we'll go through all that in great detail starting next week. So we get to week five. That's Jubilee count 57 to 70, and AM 28 to 35. In the BC count, it's 1125 to 426. So this would cover the time from David through the Babylonian exile 
and back to uh, Ezra coming out and then reestablishing everything before the apostasy hits. And again, this is that fourth week, or fifth week rather, and this right here is the prophecy that he gives. After that, during the fifth week, a house of dominion, Solomon's temple, will be built and forever glorified. And of course it was. Solomon's temple was built in 2935 AM. And if we got the right system here, that would make it 991 BC, when Solomon's temple was finished, dedicated, and started fully functioning. So that would be right here. Get into week six, and that's the time of Messiah coming and the apostasy and everything. So that gives us Jubilee 71 to 84, 3501 to 4200 AM. Remember, Jesus should have been here around the year 4000, more or less. And this is 425 BC to 275 AD is this 700 year period. Now, the regular Zadok calendar will break it up in 500 year periods called Onas. It'll be much easier to manage and see. But in this time period, there's a prophecy of something that happens right here, this Jubilee of that century of this week. And the prophecy says after that, during the sixth week, all who live in it will be blinded. Their hearts will godlessly forsake wisdom, and in it a man will ascend. And at its close, the house of dominion, which would be the temple, will be burnt with fire, and the whole race of the chosen root, that would be Israel, shall be dispersed. And that happened. You know, 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. The dispersion was after the Bar Kokhba rebellion of 135 AD. So on, on all this is given here. So we've got the AM and, and AD at this point information here. So then we get to, this is week six. Week seven is the confusing part. And this is something that happens, we don't know for sure, the Jubilee, but in that last century, which is Jubilees 85 to 98, and these time periods. And this says, after that, in the seventh week, an apostate generation arises. And again, this is anywhere between 276 and 975. So this would be a lot of apostate things arise in this time period. You've got the Pharisees solidifying the Talmud. You've got the Roman Catholic Church a few centuries later. You've got the uh, Islamic movement under Muhammad a few centuries later. And then you've got lots of things going on. You've got somewhere in here, we, it's, it's definitely not the Kabbalist because the Kabbalah came about around 11 to 1200 AD. So that's outside of this time period. But it says the rebellion will manifest in many different ways. So it's probably all of those we're talking about. At its close, the elect righteous of the eternal plant will be rewarded with a sevenfold instruction concerning his creation. And that's been debated a lot of what exactly that means, and it still needs more study. We had Josh Peck on here a ways back, and he gave his theory on it. Very good possibility. And that's basically what we talk about here is what it might be. A week number eight is Jubilees 99 to 112. And this gets us up to nine, from 976 to 1675. And so we're getting up to the time close to our time period. So that's this week, eighth week, and something happens in the first Jubilee of the last century of that week. The prophecy is, after that, there will be another, an eighth week, that of righteousness. Of course, we had the Protestant Reformation and a lot of things happening. A sword will be given to it so that they pass righteous judgment to the, on the oppressors. Sinners will be delivered in the hands of the righteous. During the completion, they will acquire houses through their righteousness, and a house will be built for honor for the great king. And so we speculate on what that was. And again, that gets us here. Now we get to this one in the next one, which is the ninth week, next to the last. And so this is the interesting part that we would be really interested in. Although that seventh week, I think, has something to do with Dead Sea Scrolls and other things. So that's, again, why it was probably preserved in the Dead Sea Scrolls, among other things. So week nine is Jubilees 113 to 126. And that's 5601 to 6300 AM, which is 1675 to 2375. That's 700-year period. 
So we're right smack dab in the middle of it right now. So this is the period during these two centuries, these jubilees, something happens. And so this says, after that, in the ninth week, the righteous judgment will be revealed to the whole world, probably the reestablishment of the nation of Israel. And again, it's, it's a start, it's a process. And the works of godlessness will vanish from the earth, and the world will be written down for destruction, probably the Great Tribulation. All men who look to the path of integrity, which is probably the millennial reign beginning. And so that's what we're talking about here. So the Israeli reestablishment as a nation was, 50, according to their calendar, 5873, which we know it is 1948 AD. And this is an explanation of other things that are going on. That's probably what we're talking about. And there's some other prophetic stuff down here that are, is really interesting as far as a time period. So when we look at the last week, though, this is what's interesting. It kind of backs up. This is the 10th week. Jubilees 127 to 140. There's 140 jubilees or 14 unas. But anyway, it's 6301 to 7000, and that's AD 2376 to 3075. Understand the world's not going to be destroyed tomorrow. And as Christians, we know that even if the rapture happens right now, there's going to be at least seven years. Then there's going to be a thousand year millennial reign. Then the earth's going to be destroyed. So we're still a thousand years out. But something happens at the very end of time. And this is what it says. After this, in the tenth week, in the seventh part, that last day of the week, that last seventh century, there will be a great eternal judgment. We call it the great white throne judgment. He will judge the watchers. The great eternal heavens will appear from the midst of the angels, you know, the new heavens. The first heaven will depart and pass away, and a new heaven will appear, and the powers of the heavens will give a sevenfold light forevermore. And so that's what we're talking about. Now, the interesting thing about this, I added a little bit just to kind of show us something. So we, if, if this, at this point right here, is the great white throne judgment, and we don't know if it's the first part or the last part of that jubilee, but it's the end of that time period. We know there's a millennial reign, so we should be able to back up exactly a thousand years, and that should be the time period for the second coming in there somewhere. So here's what we did with that. So according to this, if you back up a thousand years from here, it comes out to be the second jubilee of the fourth century of this week of centuries. And so that uh, puts us to be somewhere between, that century is somewhere between 1976 and 2075 A.D. Now, the year of this recording is 2021, so again, we're right in the middle of that time period. So basically, we're saying any time now we could have a rapture. But according to this, if you wanted to look at it, there wouldn't be a rapture resurrection probably before 1976. It's an interesting way of looking at it. And it should be all be done way before 19 or, uh, 2075. So this has just been a kind of an explanation of this. Again, back to the intro, you can see how these work. And we'll, we'll get into the Zadok calendar later. As a matter of fact, let me just back up from here and show you for our studies next week, this is the complete Zadok calendar. And it looks kind of ominous, but basically the outer circles are the months, days. And then the inner circle, the center circle is actually the Jubilee counter. So the years and the Shemitahs and the Jubilee. And then this one you, you will recognize from having uh, not seven, but 14 500-year periods or unas, and then the Jubilees in each one of those, so 10 per. So currently we are 5946, which means we are in the, and this is the count here, how it works. We're in the fourth year of the seventh Shemitah, of the ninth Jubilee, of the 12th Una, of the third age. And that will all be explained later, and it's actually an interesting thing. But that's what we're showing here. We're in the 12th Una. We're not finished with it yet. 
we're in the ninth jubilee of that, the next to the last one. And this is the jubilee counter, and of course we're in the last Shemitah in the fourth year. So we only got three more years before the jubilee changes into the last jubilee of this time period, of this age, and this una. That should be putting us in the last jubilee before the second coming of Messiah, according to what they're showing. But we put this in there because a lot of scripts are written this way. And if we can get in our head how this works, it would help a lot. And of course, here's the way we would say it. It's Tuesday, 2.28 a.m., Israeli Standard Time, August 31st, 2021. And it's uh, Elul 59.46. So this is an interesting thing. And in here, we will be able to study the inner and the outer rings. And so, actually, that's the outer ring. Let me show you the inner rings, because this is the kind of the important part, the center part. So, again, you've got the 500-year periods, each one broken up into 10 jubilees. This is the jubilee year, and then the seven years in each smita as it goes around. So, the interesting thing about that is, this will explain how everything works, and we'll have all the different ages and counters and stuff, but you'll be able to go in and study each one of the 14 onas. So, for instance, ona 1 is the first 500-year periods, and here we have a chart for everything that happened. So, first creation, Seth being born, it gets us all the way down to Jared being born. Not much here. You know, when you get to ona 2, the second 500 years, you get Enoch born, some of the other things. The interesting thing is when you get up to ona 8, you have every, all the apostasy and the things that happen with the first coming of the Messiah. And we'll end up studying this and putting more information in as we get more information from the scrolls and how that all works and the end of the different ages. And we are currently in the 12th ona. And so this 12th ona, again, right here, we're in the first, next to the last jubilee. So we're getting close. And so going through all this, I haven't put a whole lot in here yet, but we get up, start with the Balfour Declaration in 1917, go through the Gaza War we just had in 2021. Okay, and so the way this works is this is the first through the seventh Shemitahs of that ninth Jubilee. And these are the AM ranges and the AD ranges, and these are the exact dates of something that happened. So we can study it in groups of Jubilees and Shemitahs in years and we'll be able to see a lot of patterns that you wouldn't normally see if this wasn't out this way. So this is actually showing us an event uh, like the Golan was annexed in AD 1982. So we know that, but here is the range in the AD, the AM, and then the, the Shemitah Jubilee count. So we're actually looking at it at three separate calendars. So somewhere along the line we should start to see patterns. So this will be really interesting to do, and we'll start doing that next week. So at this point, I'm going to stop.